This is your year to change. This is your year to be better. This is the year you're going to be different. The year that you stay, the things that you did in the past not define you, but the things that you have planned for your future is what identifies you. And that's the power of change. Let's get into it. A lot of people want to change, whether it's for the new year, new month, birthdays. For some reason, a lot of people want to change. I've always wanted to change something about myself. Maybe it's from the way that I look, the way that I dress, the way that I eat. There's always something about me, sometimes, that I always wanted to change. The things that I had planned for myself last year, I already changed it this year. The goals that I already had planned for myself last year, I already changed it this year. Even things that I did in the past that I would love to change today. But we're not talking about what we would like to change or what we have done before that we would like or, th or the past. We're talking about what we could do moving forward with the power of change. The power of change is simple. It simply means switching up something to be different. But there's a catch to it. In order to change, you have to be willing to accept what comes with change. A lot of people want to get fit in the gym. They want to say, for the new year, I'm going to eat healthy. For the new year, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be different, you know. But they're not willing to accept what comes with those changes. For example, if my goal for this year or next year is to, you know, be, be in shape and go to the gym and stay healthy i'm gonna go to the gym right but i always quit mid-set or i just can't stand the pain and i can't be disciplined enough to accept the pain that's gonna come with it so i quit and i'm gonna start next year again the next thing i say is oh i want to start eating healthy but i love fast food i love mcdonald's i love chick-fil-a i love all the fast foods that you could ever think of but i can't stop eating it because it just tastes that good, but I can't let go. So what do I do? I quit. I'm going to start next year. A lot of people can accept what comes with change. What comes with going to the gym? If you're going to go to the gym and you're going to go work out and stay fit, what comes with that? Pain. Because you're going to feel pain. You're going to feel sore after working out. In order to eat healthy or quit eating fast food, what do you have to do? You have to let go of eating fast food in order to stay healthy or eat healthy. A lot of people are not willing to let go of their bad habits. That's why they cannot change. According to our article, why is change difficult? The challenge with change comes from our tendency to see change as a problem rather than opportunities for learning and growth. A lot of people want to change, but they just can't get rid of the bad habits. In order to get rid of the bad habits, you got to identify the problem and then find the solution. We all have bad habits. I have bad habits that I've had before and I or bad habits that I'm currently dealing with. You have bad habits that you've had or you're still currently dealing with them and you're trying to figure out how to let go. Find the problem, be disciplined enough. Do you work on discipline or do you work on motivation? You gotta figure it out. I'm gonna tell you guys the problems that I faced before I discovered the power of change. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I solved it and how you could solve it. And if you're dealing with this, you could also use this as a solution for yourself. I always told myself that I would never read and reading wasn't for me and I would never pick up a book. Like, what's the point of reading? My reading test that I took in um, high school in order to graduate with a diploma, I took that test like 13, a million times. Like, I don't even know how many times I took that test before I passed it because I always told myself, like, you know, reading wasn't for me. I'll go into the test room and then what do I do? I just sit down there look at the screen and i'm just like i just don't understand what i'm reading because i never read at home why would i read in school and then expect myself to pass the test when i got into 12th grade i decided like you know i gotta take my stuff seriously so you know i did it i read more and when i went to the testing room i was able to pass my test because and it wasn't hard for me like i was able to read the paragraphs correctly and understand what the author was talking about because i was reading more at home not just at school reading more makes me feel like i know more than my teacher it makes me feel like you know i i know more than anybody now because like i already learned stuff stuff that i talk about in my video about motivation discipline all of those things those are just because i've read the books and i've understood what i needed to learn in the books this is the book that i'm currently reading it's called think and grow rich by napoleon hill this book is very very good and very educational for me I feel like I learned a lot about failure, about growth, and everything in life. Stuff that I never learned in school, you know. And I feel like school is also one of the places and best places to, you know, 
be successful in life too but i feel like reading more is where it takes you to another level so i recommend you guys reading this book if your goal is to be successful if your goal is to you know develop your brain read more the next thing that i struggled with was procrastination procrastination was one of the things that just drive me into stress it's one of the deadliest things that could cause you to feel at success because when you procrastinate you get to the very last end. Procrastination is when you just wait to the very end in order to complete a task. And that's because when you wait to the very end to complete a task, you become more stressed. You don't have more time to think in order to do the assignment. I used to have, I used to wait till, my assignment used to be due at 11.59, and I would wait till like the very end, probably 10.50 or 11 o'clock in order to complete the assignment. And what do I do? I stress. I start to blame my teachers for giving me the assignment. I just start to, you know, panic, you know, and I just start to write nonsense. And then what happens? It doesn't work out. So that's one thing that procrastination did. In order for me to get rid of procrastination, I had to identify the problem and then find the solution. The problem that I faced with procrastination was I always got distracted with my phone. My phone was the major route to me procrastinating what i started to do was i started to put a timer on my phone on the time that i would you know be on my phone i'll be on my phone for like one hour put a timer for an hour to be on my phone to look at the messages and everything after that and the timer goes off i already have another task and that's because in order for me to identify what tasks i have next after my phone is off it's because i started to plan more I have a board next to me right here on my desk here and that's where I plan where what I'm gonna do for the day I do it at night and I just write like you know like today I said I was gonna do my essay I was gonna film this video and I was also gonna juice today so those are the things that I already planned yesterday I already have it today and that's what I'm gonna do today and then what I do is the next day I take my book this is my um handy dandy journal it's a very good journal I actually really love it I got it from TJ Maxx it's a very good journal to just write and just explain myself whenever I'm making videos like this, like talking to you guys and explaining. You write your goals, your plans, your work, and it, you just get organized. And the reason why I write my plans in my book and not on my phone is because, what did I say? What caused me to have procrastination? My phone. Whenever I go on my phone, I feel distracted because, let's say I get a notification on Instagram. After I look at my notes, I forget I have a plan to do. And then I go look at my phone and I watch Instagram. And then what happened? Procrastination happens again. You could tell me, like when I was 13 or something, that stop eating fast food. Fast food is not good for you. You know, when you eat fast food, you're just gonna. It's not good. I always heard fast food was not good for me. But I still didn't care. I still ate my fast food because fast food. Fast food was fast food. It tastes so good to me. But the problem was, I started to see how it affected me. I started to see how my body was changing, how my health was changing. I became obesity. I couldn't, like, when I walk a couple steps, I can't, like, I just start being um, out of breath more. My asthma started to kick in more. Um, I started to forget stuff. My, I get hungry even more. Like, those things that fast food did to me, like, and when you get hungry even more, you start to go eat even, even more because the, the food is not, like, um, I don't know what's in the food. Like, the preservatives that he put in the food are not natural. So, that causes you to get hungry even more. And that's what even caused... That's what happened to me. I always got hungry even more. And I always wanted to eat more. Which caused me to be fat. There was also this um, video that I saw of this lady that was comparing real chicken to Chick-fil-A chicken. Which was, like, if it was going to mold for four months and stuff. Check out this video. Okay, guys. So, I originally posted this video with the original audio. But YouTube decided to copyright me, so I'm going to tell you guys what she's saying by just reading the caption for you guys. She said, I purchased this Chick-fil-A sandwich and the Chick-fil-A fries and the nuggets and put it on the shelf and let them sit there and monitor them and see how long it takes for these products to mold. I made chicken wings one night and took the chicken wing and put it on the same shelf under the same conditions and the same pantry as Chick-fil-A. This is month four of what my chicken, my homemade chicken, looks like. Month four of the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Okay, there is no mold on these chicken nuggets at month four. I want you to consider what kind of preservatives are on these chickens. This healthy fast food in which we put in our children's body. 
I want to show you how real food molds on shelf in the pantry. How fake food filled with chemicals is not mold molten for on the shelf in the pantry. If you felt like you didn't understand what I just read for you guys, I'm also going to have the original video in the description for you guys. Yeah, that was the video and I just feel like it was, it really opened my eyes, you know, I was always, I was fat. And after I stopped eating fast food, I just became even more better, like, I was able to run more, my asthma was good because I started to, you know, eat more healthy diets. I was able to do so many things that I was not able to do when I was obese, you know what I'm saying? And that was because of fast food, so that's why I cut fast food out of my life. The goal that I had for this year was to juice more than I juiced last year. That's because I read more on juicing. Juicing has very major benefits to it. A lot of people like to look at the weight loss aspect of it, but it has so much to it. It could, it, like I read, like studies have shown that it cures cancer, prevents cancer, it helps with diabetes, obesity. So many things that, so many health problems that a lot of people are facing today. And the main reason why juicing could help helps a lot with it is because when you juice, you're juicing fruits. You're juicing those fruits that have vitamins, minerals, antioxidants that could help you fight diseases and bacteria. Let's let's give it for example. Let's say we're gonna juice hmm, watermelon, ginger, and turmeric. Watermelon has water, it's hydrating, it's good for your body, it gives you hydration. Ginger has high antioxidants and other vitamins that could help you fight diseases because ginger is very strong. Whenever someone says they're sick, what do you say? Go take a ginger shot. Go do that in order to help with your immunity. You know, turmeric also has a good way of helping with your immunity and also has high vitamins into it that could help you with so many things in your body. So if we mix all that together, that's a good medicine. All these fruits and juices are better than prescribed medicine from the from drug stores or from your doctor prescribing you because they are natural they're not like the ones that are made in the factory and everything they're like real real natural herbs medicines that were made by god there's this documentary called super juice me it it's a documentary that brings eight people from that has different kinds of diseases or different kinds of stuff that they are do, dealing with maybe obesity asthma i have asthma and any other things, you know? And it was for them to come for 28 days and they were going to be on a juice cleanse. The whole the whole 28 days, they were just going to be feeding on juices. And they were going to be working out and doing all of those things. And by the end of it, all of them just felt so much better, so much alive. All of them were saying they were going to do it again. They were going to juice and everything and feel more, you know, better. You need to watch that video if you guys have, like, thoughts on like oh i don't know if i want to start juicing because juicing is a lot you know you gotta have a you gotta have a day where you're gonna go juice you know because you could if you're juicing a lot you're gonna have to it's gonna take a while to finish but like it's better to do that than you know buy concentrated juices from the juice from the grocery store because concentrated juices are not real juices they're just a bunch of sugar with syrup in it and chemicals mixed with flavors to make it seem like it's orange juice or apple juice when it's not really juice it's just sugar with syrup and so many things that is not even good for you and that could even cause a higher risk in obesity diabetes and other health diseases in this life so watch that video it's, it's called super juice me i'm gonna put it in the description i watched that like yesterday because my brother asked me to watch it and like i was just even I was even more open to even juicing. I bought this book on Amazon. It's not here yet, but it's called the Juicing Bible. And I bought it because I also want to keep on juicing. Like, juicing is just so bad. Like, I just feel, when I juice and I drink the juice, I feel like I'm not even sick. I just feel good. Like, even juicing helped with my asthma. I used to be the person to have asthma attack all the time. Like, it could be cold outside right now, I'll have an asthma attack. It could be, it's it just like, you know, I just always had asthma attack, you know? But after I started juicing, I could run without feeling asthma attack. I could I could do so many things that I, as a person with asthma could not do, you know. I just feel much better, you know. And that's because I already put those natural vitamins in my body every day that made me be able to, you know, be good. If you want to change, you have to be able to change yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally. Mentally. What am I talking about? You have to read more, educate yourself, 
don't just educate yourself at school. School is not the only place that you could just go read. And I had to learn that the hard way by failing my test almost more than 20 times. I don't know how many times I took that test, but it was a lot. The reason why I started reading was because I just questioned myself, like, what am I going to do after high school, you know? A lot of people already figure it out. I figure it out, you know. I already know what I feel. I think I already know what I'm going to do. But I also have plans on what I think I could do, you know? So reading books make me feel like, okay, yeah, I think I have an idea of what I'm going to do. Physically, go to the gym. Work out at home. Go on walks. Go on runs. Go on jogs. Take care of your body physically. Make sure your body is at a healthy state. If you're going to eat a bun, a pizza or anything, you know, just go work, walk. Me and my family went on a walk yesterday after we ate pizza. Doesn't that, that doesn't mean you can't eat pizza anymore. Just eat pizza, you know, go on a walk after. Burn it out. Emotionally means that you should, you know, build your relationship with food. Build your relationship with people. If you're going to build a relationship with food, make... If you're going to build a relationship with food, make sure you're not eating or overeating. You're not overeating too much food. You're not eating foods that are not good for your health or have no benefits to your health. Don't be eating fast food. Don't be eating candy. I don't even eat candy anymore because it's just too much sugar and that could just cause obesity and all of those things. It doesn't have no benefits to my health, so why would I eat it, you know? The way that I help myself with um, building my relationship with food because I was always the person that could eat a whole box of pizza on my own in one sitting I used to be the type of person that, you know, I could just drink two Cokes in one day. I don't drink soda anymore because, you know, obviously because of the sugar, there's no benefits to it. I read a lot of, I read articles about how soda could be bad for you and all of those things. And I've not drank soda in five years. Like, you know, I just live off juices and water and tea. That's basically all I drink. And the way that I built my relationship with food was I started to meal prep because I always found myself ordering food all the time you know and when i order food like chipotle i always order food like chipotle all of those things and i always keep spending my money and then one day i went into my bank and i was just like let me just check what is in my bank account you know and i just saw the percentage you know how the bank account shows the percentage of what you spend your money most on and i saw i spent my mo- my money most on ordering food like almost 80 percent of my money was going to food so i was like why am i doing that like why am i buying chipotle every day when i could just make my own food at home so i started to meal prep meal prepping was the way that helped me i changed from i changed from ordering food outside into meal prepping so i'll pick a day in the week the day in a week where i don't do anything i'm free i don't just sit at home and do nothing i'm gonna start meal prepping so i started meal prepping so maybe maybe i made like you know chicken for protein had some broccoli and other veggies mixed to it and i had like black rice to it or I had like potato or something and I just made a bunch of it and put it in a bowl. Just have the same food. You don't want to make five different meals to meal prep. Just make the same food and just put it in a bowl in five containers and put it in the fridge in order for you to eat it later. But make sure you have um, more protein and less carbs in order to have muscle and all of those things beneficial for your health. Hope you guys enjoyed what all the facts that I had said today. And it helped you a lot. I'm tired, and you're watching Tired Fit. Have a nice day.